Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the CSUN Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This is the second in a series of videos associated with statistical testing, inferential statistics in geography. And what we're going to do in this video is take two samples from Chicago uh, census tract data and compare them to see if they are statistically similar or the same, or if they are indeed different. So what you see in front of you is a map of Chicago by census tract, uh, percent white is showing. The blue dots on the map are uh, represent payday lending operations, and the red dots on the map operate, now the other way around, are the payday lenders, and the blue are the banks. As was the case in a previous video, what we are going to do is to extract data from the point layer into the polygon layer so that we may export the data into Excel and there we will conduct the statistical testing on the samples. So make sure you go ahead and, and save this as something new. I'm going to call this uh, Chicago Instructor. You call it whatever you want. Save it somewhere where you can find it. The first step after that is to click on the analysis click on the tools and from the tools you can find a spatial join which is one way to do it. The other way to uh, do that is to right click on the Cook County Census Tract and from there select joins and relates and spatial join is what you're going to select. So click that and basically what we're going to do is ask how many banks and then later how many payday lenders are in each of these census tracts. So the target feature is Cook County Census Tract. The join feature for the first round is banks. And uh, one to one keep all target features and it's if it intersects. If it's inside you can switch. There's lots of options here. But intersect will work for us and just click OK. After a moment or two we have a new census tract layer map. Let's open the attribute table quickly and see what has been added. Now, so this join count here is the column that we are most concerned with. Because join count is the number of banks in each of the census tracts. So what we're going to do here is to use this new layer to add a second spatial join. And this time, we're going to call uh, we're going to call up the payday lenders. So we're going to get a second column of join count, but it'll be called join count uh, underscore one. And maybe we'll call it give this a name rather than Cook County Census Tract, uh, whatever. How about Cook County? join to something to that effect and click OK it will run we'll get a new layer of data gonna remove the first one open the attribute table on the second and there's join count one this is the first one and then there's a second one here now, at this point, it's kind of hard to understand which one is which, but um, if we sort by descending, we can see that this first one remains the banks, because there's uh, downtown Chicago, there's a census tract with 33 banks and uh, eight payday lenders. So at this point, what we're going to do is go to right click and then data and export the table. We want to export that table and we can't export it within the geo database. We have to browse somewhere. I will save mine 
into into the Chicago folder, click OK, um, and then I need to give it a name, and I will call this Cook uh, County. Uh, let's not give it any spaces. Cook County join payday payday banks something like that and click OK. Now this is going to be a DBF file and we can open that in Excel. So I'm going to click OK and there it is. Now we need to shut down or at least uh, pause our work with ArcGIS Pro and open Excel. Okay, so now I have an Excel file open, a blank one. Got to go to File, Open, and look for the folder where I saved it. And it was called uh, Chicago. And this is an interesting way of doing this. This was the, the, the file that I was looking for. Cook County joined Payday Banks. We can open it. Uh, we don't want that. File, open. Let's click Browse. Documents, ArcGIS, Projects, Chicago. This is where I have it. And I want to select and make sure DBF files. And this is this is the one that I just saved moments ago. I'm going to click open. So uh, right off the bat I want to sort this data Z to A and I know that column A is banks and column C here is payday lenders. At this point I need to just get rid of a bunch of these columns as I don't really need them for my purposes. And if you're in my class, you will know that I'm expecting you to ditch most of these columns of data. So I'm highlighting them. We're going to keep median age, which is there on the right in column AK, but all of these Alt, Edit, Delete are gone. And we're going to check median age. Uh, I think it was average family size. Keep it. Um, we're keeping percent watt, uh, square mile. These last two, uh, square mile and percent white. Alt, Edit, Delete. And then all the rest of this junk, everything else. So now I just have a few columns of data that I am going to hang on to. Um, why don't I just keep uh, the FIPS and I can get rid of all of this as well. Delete is another way to get rid of things. So what I'm doing is really just reducing the data so it's easy for uh, my students to see and for me to process. So here's the count of banks, here's the count of payday lenders. I have one geographic column here, FIPS, so I sort of know which is what. And then here is the data that we are going to analyze. Just make sure that your bank call your data is, is sorted by bank column. And then what I want you to do is to highlight the data all the way down until you find a zero in that column. Because what you're doing is taking a sample of only the neighborhoods or the census tracts that have a bank in them. And that uh, is about 562. I'm going to press Control C to copy, and I'm going to move this over here. 
and um, moved it oh, a little too far over. Oh, and these columns are super huge, so we don't want that. So I'm highlighting the columns and I'll skinny them up a little bit. Maybe not that much. So double click. And so these are my bank neighborhoods. I'm going to delete those cells I don't need. And because they're banks, let's color them green. And now I'm going to repeat the process, this time with the payday lending neighborhoods. Sort it by Z to A, bring all the these to the top, copy, down, highlight all of the neighborhoods, the census tracts that have a payday lender in them. What if I paste it as values? A little cleaner still these massive useless um, row from where I brought them over from ArcGIS color them pink and red for payday loan okay now I have my data set up in a fashion that will allow me to just delete one more column here to ask a question about the differences in these two samples that I've drawn. So how do we do this? We go to data and over here you should have data analysis tab. If you don't you need to go to file options add-ins look down here at the bottom manage Excel add-ins go make sure that analysis tool pack is checked click OK and if that didn't appear then see your instructor but that's how to activate the data analysis tools click that once and what we're going to do in this class today notice there's a lot of statistical tools we're going to do the t-test two sample test assuming equal variances. Click OK. And you're going to do a series of these tests. So let's start with median age. So here's the first sample here, variable one range, median age, clicked in cell J1, control shift down, which highlights all of the values for median age in bank neighborhoods click in variable range 2 and then I just have to come and replicate that only for and in this case uh, it's column P but these are the payday loan neighborhoods we hypothesize that there's no difference because that is what um, in my research I found that this these industries suggested that there should be no difference uh, click on labels because we used uh, row one, the confidence interval, significance levels 0.05, and then we can just click OK at this point. Woo, that was fast. It did a t test for us. Didn't even have to calculate anything. And the t statistic that you are looking for is right there 0.58 which if you've been in the class you know that that means that they are not significantly different uh, the critical to say that one is bigger t value would have been 1.64 so it would have had to been bigger than that or smaller than that to say that they one was bigger or smaller or if it was just to say that it's different it would have had to have reached that critical 1.96 magical number. So your task is to repeat this process where you go to data and data analysis and run this but with the other three columns of sampled data. That is the end of this video tutorial.